I interviewed the world's best Fortnite coach, Blood X. His current roster includes Clicks, Queasy, Vino, Tayson, Mustache, Mr. Savage, Vadil, Pink, and many more of the best players in the world. So an important question first, big differentiation, your Twitter bio does not say Fortnite coach. Instead, it says mentor. So can you kind of explain your methodology and like why you consider yourself a mentor rather than a coach? I think like coach is like, it's so specific towards like Fortnite, I feel like. But whereas if you have a mentor role, it has like, you have more impact on uh, their d daily doings, you know, their life, like their emotions more than just teaching them how to play the game because like there's so much more to performing than just playing the game yeah it's definitely true what do you think like some of those really important elements are obviously people learn by doing mistakes right but most people learn by doing the mistake and then and then reflecting afterwards but the very best will learn in the moment and correct and make the best out of it and get away with it the clear head is really important i think if you look at the best players they have a really clear head i mean you could just Tayson, for example, doesn't play the game much. You can feed him like simple information and it just locks in. I would say like the big, like a, the smallest portion or importance is like mechanics. Of course you need a, a certain level of mechanics, right? But everyone has that in, in 2023. So like it, it really boils down to like having a clear mind and being intuitive, I think. So kind of what specifically do you mean when you say clear mind? And like, how does that apply to Fortnite and obviously the people you work with? If your brain is uh, thinking subconsciously about what you watched on TikTok last night when you were in bed or, you know, when you woke up, you have a problem because you have to make in Fortnite, you have to make so many decisions in 20, like, let's say a game lasts 26, 27 minutes and you might have to make like, uh, I'm not even kidding, maybe 500 decisions in that game, like subconscious decisions, but also, you know, major decisions because you're you're constantly making decisions going left right you know doing this hitting this hitting that looking at the time like there's plenty so if you're if you're fogged up for 10 seconds during a zone switch for example the game is over you need to remove the distractions first of all you need to remove twitter tiktok you know all these distractions youtube videos any short form like short term content short form content that they're constantly exposed to like the biggest factor is like you need to be around them and correct them when they're doing the mistakes that's like why i like to call it mentor as well like it's so much more because it's like it's almost like a I'm probably gonna get slapped for this, but uh, like a uh, father-son relationship. As much as I'd like to make fun of Bloodex for saying that, the point he makes is actually very good. Trying to minimize the distractions that you have, a particular around competition time, is incredibly important. You have to make so many decisions in such a short period of time, whether it's early game, mid game, late game, whenever it is throughout the entire game, there are so many decisions that you need to make and having your brain clogged with other content, not mine obviously, can definitely cloud your decision making process. Of course, I think the most important part of Bloodex's group is the environment that he's created with all of the players no i think i think when you form a group of people that are very competitive no one wants to be the worst and even like small rewarding systems like it could be anything like let's say a solo cash cup is coming up no one's motivated to play like the off season's on but then you have it you put them up against each other you know today we're gonna have a competition sometimes you put expectation on the player like let's say okay today if you win two games you're gonna get this or you get that or you get a reward or i'll buy a pizza or you know and then put them up against each other because really all it takes sometimes is just like igniting the brain after a, a grand final season for example you have two cups like no one's motivated to play that like no one's around like currently everyone's in vacation mode it's like the, the, the cash cup even today let's say just give them like a small carrot you know like just give them like something give them something and to, to remember that you know every tournament counts because they're building a foundation for the future so like you should take everything serious to an extent to, to, to an, an extent, extent to an extent what's the extent where you don't because of course like burnout is very real and we've seen so many fncs champions win their region totally fall off the next season so like at what point do you say okay time to slow things down take a break so this is where relations come in. This is where you need strong relations. This is where you need to be going and attacking each problem different. Because some players can cope with it. You have Queasy, for example. Let's use Queasy as an example. He's a grinding or he's a machine. Then he's a machine. Maybe someone like Tayson who's been struggling a couple, like a couple months earlier, wasn't as motivated. Like let's say when Grants concludes, give him time, give him space, maybe play with friends, you know, maybe not even play a tournament. Whereas Queasy and Venno wants to get on, oh, I want to learn the next meta, you know. So yeah, like you have to attack, I think you have to attack each 
each problem individually. Yeah, and this is something I care a lot about because burnout is very, very real. Burnout it's something is I've real. experienced. It's something that so many top players experience. And so it's interesting to try and figure out, like, how do the best of the best try and manage such a common problem? It's about knowing when to take the breaks, honestly. Like, if you look at, I think I was with Christian Venno probably, like, every day for the last 30, 40 days. And I haven't spoke to them since Grants, pretty much. It's just like we, we lived on top of each other for so long that we need a break. Obviously, I speak to them like a DM. I speak with them like occasionally, but it's not like we're sitting in a friend group, you know. Everyone's, like I said, in vac vacation mode, like they're traveling, they're having fun. I, I don't think I picked up on that in the beginning. So it's like experience and me improving as like it's an improvement for me as well. Like sometimes you just have to sit back, have fun, do something else, be with your friends, play with Archie in a cash cup and win. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that could be like a different type of stress though. <laughs> No, it's a different type of fun. It's a different type of fun. You're having fun with your friends. No, but it, on a serious note, it's important. Like, so many, I think, competitive players just forget about the fact that the game can be fun. Whether it's, I mean, I'm not going to say playing pubs because I don't think top level pros will have fun playing pubs. But, like, taking a step back and finding something that they enjoy, even just a little bit. Even if it's, like, playing another game casually, like myself, I sit back and I play tons of Pokemon because it's, like, not a competitive game. Well, or the, the way I play, at least, is not a competitive game. So I can sit back and relax from the Fortnite side of things. Whereas a lot of players just go Fortnite, 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 Fortnite. They go hard onto that and then they just burn out at the end of the season. Exactly, like exactly what you said, like on the topic where you ended it. Like, let's say uh, we could use Squeezy and Venom as an example. They've won this grand, they put so much effort in and you couple, I, I don't know if it was a week after we had this test performance evaluation cup, right? And right after grants, I said, you know, guys, just chill, play with your friends, have fun. They ignored it, played with each other, bad vibes, didn't take it as serious in finals, ended it on a bad note instead of keeping the grand's note, you know? Going into a new season, maybe for most, maybe you don't think about it, but for some people, it could be like, oh, we ended it on a, on a bad, you know, on a bad note. It's the same thing with the cash cup, like the last two cash cups, for example. If they are to play with each other, you can't top a grandsman. Yes, yeah, so I guess like end on a high more than anything else. Like if you know, you've won the biggest tournament already, stay there and then start grinding. Well, I was going to say, when, when do you advise actually to, to get back into it, jump straight back into that grind? When season starts, you need to kind of look in instantly because you, you don't have time to lose. But here comes the important, like the, here comes the important part. Now we have a new meta. Now there's things to learn. So then you're give, then you're given a reason already now to play with each other. So sometimes you have to go against your own words, but again, it comes down to each and every player, I think. And this is another point that I find is extremely valuable. Not only should you set up small competitions within your friend group, say whoever places the best in the solo cash cup is the GOAT of that time in that moment, but also you should set times where you take a break from playing competitive and from grinding to reset your mentality and re-thrive in your love for the game, if that's the right way to word it. But one of the things that's always interested me along that same vein is how much impact does a coach actually have and how much of it is just the players? My purpose when I start working with someone, the main purpose is for that player to be able to handle himself and the play style that I teach, make it his own, without me being there like there's a foundation just like the just like when you build a house you build a foundation for the house to stand on that foundation will be there forever like if not forever it will be there for a long time and that's kind of the foundation that i'm trying to build for these players too i'm just here to perfect because they're already good because people keep asking me like would they win without you would they place without you well i can't tell you that but what i can tell you is they were willing to hire me to win that's the best answer i can give Right. And they did win multiple times. So like, uh, on that note, like, you know, if, if another coach wants to get into the position that you're in, like, what kind of advice would you have for them to try and work with some of the best players in the world? I think that's the biggest giveaway I can tell to other people that are in the same. Like, I don't, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I don't sit, I, I try not to associate with other people in my, like, my work space because I don't want to give away too much with what I'm doing or... Maybe it's egoistic to say, but if I can give any advice to anyone doing Fortnite coaching, obviously like the base level of understanding needs to be there, but like relation, focus on relation, make sure the players are happy, they feel seen. The focus shouldn't be on you. The focus should be on making the players the best you can. And then if that happens, then the rest comes by itself, I think.
I think it's good information that other coaches can just pick up on and move on with, basically, just focus on the players. I think the, the final thing I'll have for you whilst I have you here, there's a lot of tweets you've been putting out, super positive, asking people to stop complaining, like, what's the story? What's, what's the thought process behind that? And people might think I'm crazy, you know, saying things like, you know, stop complaining, or at least try give feedback in, like, a mature way so they listen. So now, like, for example, with the siphon situation as well, Yes, I get it. It's boring. We're used to the game being faster paced. I think they removed it for the wrong reasons, but I can't. I have to deal with it. And I can't tell the players in my group that, oh, guys, you should stop playing or it's so boring. Like, I can't be that guy. I need to be the guy going in the front line saying, you know, deal with it. It's what we're given. If you want a deeper dive into one of the teams that Blood X works with, you can click this video right here to see the insane rise of Cuisine Vino.